So y'all ready for this? No. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, the what? The joke was important. <laughs> oh. He just died. Okay. <laughs> Who died? Anyway, welcome to the Incompate Club Podcast. My name is JD. I'm some form of Kyle. <laughs> I'm Andy. I love how we do this every week and there's still a long pause. <laughs> because I don't want to step on Kyle. It goes me, then Kyle, then you. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm in the right to wait. Order I just do it to fuck with you guys. I know you do and I hate you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you're new here, uh, the Ink Paint Club podcast is a weekly podcast that we do where we talk about uh, animation, cartoons, art, whatever. Uh, and we just kind of bullshit about what have you. Um, if at the end of the episode you enjoyed our bullshittery, uh, please uh, share this with uh, whoever. Uh, we got Facebook, we got Tumblr, uh, so... Help us get the word out. Hey, wait, 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 wait. We also have Twitter. We also have Instagram now. Yes, too. we have, thanks to Andy's social media expertise, we have reinvigorated our Twitter and are now on Instagram. And those links will be in the description of the episode. Um, JD learned what a hashtag was tonight. I know what a hashtag is, I just don't know how to use them properly. A hash brown? I like hash browns. Fuck, I want some hash browns tomorrow. Getting bright and early to go get me an Egg McMuffin. So, how about that topic? Yeah, so this week, if you couldn't tell from the teaser image, we're talking about motherfucking Space Jam from 96. <laughs> one of the uh, biggest, one of the, the uh, for many 90s kids, the high point of cultural... Hey like, man, I saw this show, or this movie, in theaters with my mom, and it was a rousing good time. Hey, I saw it with my brother took me to go see Space Jam. And... That was the shit. I saw it with my aunt in theaters, because my parents worked. <laughs> okay. No. No, it was, I, I, it, um, it's, it's really weird when I went and saw this, because, sorry, this is JD personal history now, um. Since I didn't live with my mom, I'd go visit her every now and then, and so when I did come over and visit, she'd always want to do something specifically with me, so we went and saw Space Jam, and my brothers and sisters really fucking hate me after that. Because <laughs> they wanted to go see fucking Space Jam, my mom's like, nope, just gonna be the two of us this time, and I got so much shit when I got back. <laughs> so it was a daddy, or a mommy-daughter day? <laughs> Shut up. Harsh. <laughs> Kyle, I hate you with every fiber of my being. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, so, welcome to the jam. Let's listen to us. Just, just, just ram. Just, 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 just stop. <laughs> just stop right yeah, now. Yeah, you know what? I mean, a space jam. Ah, uh, no, fucking go for it. All right. So, uh, if you've been living under a rock or lived a sheltered childhood, uh. Space Jam was an interesting movie uh, from 1996 that uh, absolutely nobody asked for, but everybody <laughs> wanted. Yeah, so it the, the, we'll go through it like a little more in depth. But basically, the Cliff Notes version of this is Michael Jordan is being asked to play a basketball game with all the Looney Tunes in Looney Tune Land, and aliens are involved and. It's it's craziness. Yeah, you're really uh, short changing the plot here. I said we'd get more into it. That was the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> that wasn't even a very good Cliff Notes version. Shut up. Oh, well, am, am I going to be graded on this? Yeah, it'll, yes. be on the, it'll be on the test. But, um, so, if I remember right, like, this entire conceit for this movie was based on, like, like Michael Jordan Air commercials from the 90s, where, like, they just put the Looney Tunes in it because that was back when they were trying to, you know, make Looney Tunes fucking edgy for some reason. Because of the 90s. Oh, was yeah, that... it was based off a 90-second uh, Nike ad that had Bugs and, I think, Marvin the Martian. And and then some exec at Warner Brothers was like, hey, let's make this into a full-length movie. And 
Well, I mean, you have to look at it. I mean, Michael Jordan was, and still for most people is, like the pinnacle of basketball dynasty Hall of Fame. Like, he obviously is a pretty big deal when you consider that Nike is, you know, still kind of around. Yeah. I, he had, he, he had his own beanie baby. Okay. He, he, uh, he is the jump man, the Nike logo before the Now, show. is he still <laughs> selling Hanes underwear to this day? I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, wait, no, he sells Fruit of the Loom, doesn't he? No, I'm pretty sure it's Hanes. Oh. Well, it worked they, on me because I buy Hanes. They make a reference to him wearing Hanes in... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grab your hands and your Nikes. <laughs> that entire sequence is the biggest name drop of corporations in history. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The whole movie was kind of like, if you watch it again, it's actually it's actually kind of a long joke about Michael Jordan's bizarre career. Yeah, it's... Well, we'll, we'll get into plot here, so... Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, your cast, you've got here, you've got... Michael Jordan, you know, as Michael Jordan, and, you know, performing as well as you can expect an athlete with no prior acting experience to to perform. He wasn't, he wasn't that bad. He wasn't that bad. I, 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 he was yeah. better than Steel and Shazam. <laughs> no one was bad as Shaq and Steel. I mean, uh, I think Shaq has pretty much made a career out of just being a doof. He had right. a career, too. He uh, embraced he... it. And I can admire that. Oh yeah, well he's also got a PhD if I remember correctly. Probably. Oh, well that's oh, he, he yeah. learned he learned how to invest. <laughs> he learned how he learned about money. He learned how to invest his money properly and I think he's honestly known as Dr. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> but uh yeah, you've got you've got Michael Jordan and uh Kyle's favorite actor, Wayne Knight. <laughs> as as Michael Jordan's would... personal ex- uh assistant person. I would say Bill Murray, but but we yeah, had Bill him Mur- in Jurassic Park, so... Bill Murray's also in this movie. No, oh. he's not. Oh, we watched two completely different movies then. Oh. Uh, and then, you know, you got all the the cartoon characters. As Wikipedia is very uh, eager to point out that uh, Mel Blanc was dead by the time this movie came out, so all the Looney Tunes were voiced by different people, because, you know, I didn't know that. I guess. I, I I didn't know that either. I knew Mel Blanc was dead by the time this movie was. But, uh... You know, what's weird, though, is I remember watching a bunch of shitty movies in the 90s in theaters, and they had a bunch of, like, Looney Tunes shorts in the, uh... They were, like, brand new ones made for in front of movies. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was kind of cool. But it's like, they tried to... They tried to really push the Looney Tunes in the 90s, and it didn't really go anywhere, yeah, it seemed. Yeah, it, it seemed like a big marketing push. It's like, we gotta put Looney Tunes on everything, and they're just like as gangster rappers seem relatable to kids. Uh, I, I, actually, I actually asked a Hispanic friend of mine, because he's wearing one of those shirts, and he didn't have an answer for me. I was just, I was just asking him, like, what is the deal with, like, you know... Looney Tunes dressed as, like, you know, rappers and stuff like that. And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay, best answer I could have hoped for. <laughs> well, good. I, I didn't have any other. I was like, okay, that All works. Right. I'd wear something just because it looks cool. Yeah. But um, as for the uh, the cartoon characters, you've got a lot of a lot of people who would become, you know, if they weren't already big-name voice actors, they, you know, would become... Because, uh, you know, you got Billy West is doing Bugs' voice. You got D. Bradley Baker doing Daffy. And uh, Bill Farmer is in there. Maurice, Maurice LaMarche was, is in there. Frank who Wilkes. was Bill Farmer? Bill Farmer was Foghorn, uh, Yosemite Sam, and Sylvester. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, Billy West was Bugs and Elmer. D. was Daffy, Taz, and the Bull. Uh, you got Bob Bergen, who has basically been Porky Pig's voice actor for God knows how many years now. He's got that job security. He's got that job security. I love that clip in that documentary. If you have not seen I Know That Voice and you like cartoons, please watch that because it's a good time. Highly recommend it. I like that documentary. If not, just to hear that uh, Mark Hamill does not like um, 
shit. Who did <laughs> Michael say? Richardson. Yeah, he did. They just do a total shit on each other. It's wonderful. Oh, I love it. Oh, uh, so, um, uh, you guys just want to get into the like the the bigger plot of this movie? <laughs> Let's dive right in. All right. Pull the trigger. That's not going to be the catchphrase to our show. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, basically the entire plot of this movie revolves around, like, Michael Jordan's retirement from and return to basketball in the 90s. Um, so it, like, um... Okay, so basically the plot... Yes, thank you. <laughs> Please carry this. God, you're fucking dying here. <laughs> Sorry. Well, basically, the, the plot of the movie takes place on two fronts. You have what's going on in the cartoon world, and you have what's going on in our world, the real world. So basically, like JD was trying to get started with, it's it kind of like, one, on the Michael Jordan side of things, it's kind of like a subtle, actually not so subtle jab at his career. Like, it's about his retirement from basketball, his attempt to play baseball, his attempt to golf. Like, it... Basically, it's just kind of his side. Is, his side of the story is kind of like slice of life. Where the merge happens, though, is in the Toon world, kind of like in Roger Rabbit, I guess. There is a planet with these invade. There is a planet with these this alien that voiced by Danny DeVito, and because there's some sort of clause in Danny DeVito's contract where every character he voices has to look like him, <laughs> <laughs> he voices some grubby. Angry, fat, short, fat guy. Fat, yeah, short, fat character. Once again, has to look like him. Mister Swackhammer. Was his name Mister Swackhammer? Mister Swackhammer. Wow, that was a good, <laughs> wow, good name. But um, basically, he runs an amusement park, and they're running out of star attractions. It's a shitty amusement park. It's terrible. And okay, they're, some, they're, you know, they're, you know, sorry, not to really. Go on, the, go on. Okay, go, okay, fine. No, go no, on. no. Go on, go on, go on. Okay, just something that really confused me as a kid. Okay, I get that. Uh, the Looney Tunes live in an altered dimension deep beneath the Earth. I accept that as a thing that happens. Why are there cartoon aliens in space? <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring that up. If they live s- in the center of the Earth, how is there another universe in the center no, of the Earth be- because that they contains... Sh- they, no, they show it because they zoom out from the Earth to the alien's planet. Why are the aliens cartoons? Oh. <laughs> well, now you're just trying to make sense out of a fucking cartoon. <laughs> All right, uh, Eddie, continue with the plot summary, please. I mean, once <laughs> Sorry. again, this is like, well, not everything can be as well thought out as Who Framed Roger Rabbit, okay? I love that movie. It's oh, so movie. do I. I mean, it is clearly they thought everything out, but it was also based off a novel. Yeah, but um, where were we in? Oh, yeah. So basically this alien, for some reason, I don't know how he jumped to this conclusion. I'm sure there was a thousand other... Oh, wait. Oh, how, how he... Cause like, remember, decided they... to go and basically... Oh, wait, no, 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 I'm no. sorry. Yeah, because I was, it, cause I was it, thinking right. Because he's, right. like, he's like, I need more attractions. What do we do? And he actually sits on a TV remote, and all the TVs behind his desk start playing old Looney Tune uh, shorts. Yeah he, yeah, he decides <laughs> to basically go and take them to be his, his, his star attractions. Typical Scooby-Doo level of plot here. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, need, I need people, we're going to go enslave the Looney Tunes to bring them back to the theme park. It's a to... subtle commentary on slavery. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, though. No. Um, but, meanwhile, and like... Then, and, go... and then the Looney Tunes are dicks, and they're like, hey, you little guys are short, because well, yeah, it's a bunch of little guys. He sends, like, these, like, what, like, less than knee-high, shin-high, little adorable-looking aliens? Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, hey, why don't we play basketball? Because you guys are short. And that's all that basketball requires is that you need tall people. Just to let people know, the t- Looney Tunes did not understand the concept of basketball. No, like, <laughs> he's like, all right, how many of you played basketball? And no, it was like, what? <laughs> what is that? And they had to like, watch a film reel they had to watch, from, yeah, like, like, the 40s. <laughs> It's pretty great, actually. I love actually, that yeah. part. <laughs> uh, but so, like the 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 little alien guys, like, all right, they like fine. Because it, isn't it like Bugs like like pulls out like a rule book or something? Is like, hey, look, if you're gonna try to enslave us, we have to like defend ourselves. That's why they play basketball. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure they did something like that. But so they're like the aliens see that you know they're not tall. But, 
like the little film reel they watch like tells them what the NBA is. So they're like, you know what? Because our powers are unexplained and we can do pretty much whatever we want, we're gonna go to the real world and steal the 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 raw essence talent from actual NBA players like Charles Barkley and and Patrick Ewing <laughs> before he was in Snickers commercials. Right. <laughs> so if you want bad acting? That's that's. That's the pinnacle of it. Yeah. I don't so, think he was really trying. <laughs> right. So, you know, they get back. So, so they go, like, to all these, uh, these fucking NBA games and, like, start stealing the powers from these, these players and they start fucking up and, uh, you know, because they don't know how to play basketball anymore, apparently. Because, <laughs> you know, skill is something you can take from someone. You right. Can extract it. <laughs> um, but so you know, the little aliens go back down to the the cartoon world because you know it's just easy to go back and forth between those two. Um, aliens, they have space age technology. Sure, yeah, and so they're like, you know, the Luigi is making fun of them again because they're like, oh, you guys are so sure this is gonna be so fucking easy, and I I I don't know why this piece of animation sticks in my head for 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 so long, but. Uh, the little aliens, like, you know, they've been, like, transferring all the, the player skill into, like, this basketball, so they need to, like, you know, touch it, and they, like, just have this, like, oddly fluid piece of animation where they all, like, turn into, like, these giant fucking demon creatures. <laughs> they were really well designed. Yeah, I love the Monstars. They're fucking awesome. Yeah, they they basically become the team known as the Monstars. The Monstars. <laughs> it's, they... Yeah. They are on par with the Harlem Globetrotters, I would say, in terms of <laughs> basketball skill. Yeah, but... I think they I think they might have given the Globetrotters a run for the first half of a game. Right. <laughs> Until they resorted to weapons. <laughs> well, you know, the Globetrotters, their skill always lies and they it's always their plan to tail until half time. Yeah. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's th- just that whole sequence of them transforming, like I love like how you see all the like the spines like popping out of their back and like how... somebody watched Akira. <laughs> I guess it was pretty dark, but it was awesome dark. It was dark, but I I love that like whole twenty seconds. <laughs> Some of my favorite animation to this day. That is where the budget went. But so <laughs> <laughs> kind of. But so that's that's about when the Luchas know they're fucked and. For some reason, Bugs already knows who Michael Jordan is, despite not knowing what basketball was ahead of time. Well, because he's on commercials and stuff. Do they yeah. get Do they get Earth Entertainment down there? Well, I mean, the well, alien got well, the I alien mean, he, got Looney Tunes Entertainment. Yeah, and and he did an interview for Nickelodeon magazine with Michael Jordan. So I mean, they known each other. They oh. had to. They were in that commercial together. I mean, Clearly, there's connections. I, I mean, I, maybe maybe Bugs just didn't know about that when he did the like. They're like, "Hey, look, guys, they're offering us a shitload of money to I go guess. and be in a commercial with this guy." Let's. Like, I don't know what basketball is. I could care less, but I want that money. I guess. I mean, I'd do it. That could I, buy a lot of carrots, man. I, I, I guess it would make kind of sense because, like, after they go get Michael Jordan or whatever, like, they're very self-aware because Daffy like. It's like, no, we're 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 sole property of Warner Brothers and he kisses his own, his own ass with the Warner Brothers logo taped to it. Oh, the so. movie is incredibly self referential Oh, it's it's meta as fuck. Like it's 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 hot shots at everybody. Oh. Uh, yeah. Like, all sorts of random ass references you would never like like think. <laughs> like, yeah. Like fiction. Yeah, yeah the they, whole fiction they, reference, like, that blew my mind when I saw it. I, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea what that reference was as a child, but looking back at it, I was like, oh, well, that was popular at the time. I was, so. like, I was like, hey, they're men in black. But... That's what I thought they were. <laughs> He's like, I just watched Men in Black. That's the thing that I'm familiar with. I'm like, yeah. nope. Back in <laughs> Much the day, violent Pulp movie Pulp. reference. Hey, Pulp Fiction's a national treasure. I love it. Pulp Fiction's all right. I haven't, I haven't watched it in a while. but So, you know. Bugs goes up, steals Michael Jordan because that's what you do, and Michael Jordan has get the, goes through his whole thing where he's like, you're not real, you're just a cartoon character, and blah de blah Well, cartoon basically, they, they have to, basically, Michael Jordan is brought down there to put an end to the Monstars, but 
you know, they're cartoons, they're also giant demons now, so they basically kick the shit out of him. Yeah. And then it's up, then they basically organize, okay, we're going to do this game of basketball, Michael Jordan has to teach the tune, Looney Tunes how to play basketball. So that's like the first half of the movie is like this Rocky-style training. And, and then they were like, hey, this is a fucking sausage fest. <laughs> Let's throw a girl in here. Yeah! Hey, gotta nail those furries somehow. Yeah, the, 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 the character launched so many furry boners to so many children. It started yeah. with and Maid Marian. And she has the... And she has the best line in the movie. She says, hey, nice butt. And the orange one has a gigantic ass. <laughs> and it, it was silly. That that was a... You sounded you sound like you really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, Lord. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I thought it was, I thought it was comical. <laughs> it was the pinnacle of humor. <laughs> well, we're talking the... about... We're talking about the pop culture event of... It... Yeah, it anywhere. was the it was the magnum opus of hilarity. Like, uh, yeah, can't like, top that shit. Like the Avengers? No, that's not as big a deal as Michael Jordan and fucking Bugs Bunny <laughs> taking on space aliens in a cosmic basketball game. Yeah, yeah and, you know, despite the fact we're talking as much shit about this movie right now, we're not even halfway <laughs> not even halfway through. I have to admit, I have no problems with it. <laughs> I know. I just like to talk shit. This movie was actually pretty awesome. I I, I still maintain that Space Jam is a good movie. Yeah. I, I hey, Robert, Roger Ebert liked it. That's you know, saying. That's you know saying. Who, was this pre-stroke or pre-stroke? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know who you know who did not like Space Jam? Who? A nostalgia critic. Oh. He was very offended by the fact that a female character had breasts. Oh God. Furry like, titties. like, look, I like Doug Walker most of the time, but oh, my God, he's, he, 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 this, I, I draw the line at a five minute tirade about rabbit tits. Well, my question is like, well, I mean, I, I just don't, I mean, I don't know. It's like the guy, the guy talks all this big shit about like how media sucks to him, but it's like, no offense, his shit is worse. <laughs> like, didn't he do that stupid kick assia movie and it was like, beyond awful it was dumb but i watched like, I, it i watched I, all the i heard movies. people watched it but nobody like was happy watching it <laughs> i heard it was like stockholm syndrome yeah, if if you were a fan of the all the characters on there then it was you know oh like the angry man child who can yell at nintendo <laughs> yeah am i, I getting am i getting him confused with someone else on I, th- I think we're just getting off topic <laughs> I'm just so that if you're listening to stuff. this right now Come fight us. <laughs> fight you guys. I'll take him. Uh, I, I've got no... I have no quarrel with Doug Walker. we got an invitation right here. Admit no, 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 no. ass kicking. Hold on, hold on. No, I know how we can do this and we can make it relevant. We're going to challenge that god-awful website to a basketball game. <laughs> We're going to challenge what's left of Channel Awesome to a basketball game. Yeah. Look, I've tried playing basketball as a child, and I'm god-awful at it. So. No, you know what? That's fine. We'll go and get Charles Barkley. He's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. He's too busy getting yell- yelled at by Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get some rabbit titties and Wayne Knight. Once we again, probably not doing anything. I'm sure if we just called him up, hey, you want to come like help us play basketball? <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I'm not doing anything right now. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a whole second half of the movie we still need to get to, so... Well, we got an hour, Phil, so let's just settle down there, J.D. Yeah, we'll just say that let's, there's a let's Seinfeld work as his reunion. <laughs> we'll be like, hey, Newman, we're doing a Seinfeld reunion. You want to be in? And he'll say yes, and then we'll kidnap him. No, I think we should say a third rock reunion because, I don't know, it seemed like, it seemed like he had more fun doing that. Oh, yeah. He wasn't played for just being an asshole. <laughs> nah, he probably loved being that. Oh, God. But anyway, back to the movie. Yes, back to the movie, so... We're talking about a movie? Video game? <laughs> <laughs> so... We got the Lola Bunny, right? The yeah, token so... Male character. The, to- the, the girl. Her <laughs> personality is girl. <laughs> girl. Smells feminine. <laughs> right. Has eyelashes. And, and and bug wants bugs wants to put his bunny dick in it and make many bunny babies. Well, no offense. Can you really blame him though? Nah. I mean, they clearly. It's like when I watched an extremely goofy movie. I had to watch it at work, 
And I'm like, I'm like, man, whoever designed some of these characters clearly has some, <laughs> like, they really like drawing tits. They really want to stick their dick in a dog. I don't even think it's that. I just think it's more like, well, if I have to draw a female character, I'm drawing on my terms. I guess. Ray so. Girl for the win. She <laughs> didn't even have a name. <laughs> Her personality was Beret. Yes. <laughs> With hipster. Oh, God. So, where uh, were we in uh, the... Uh, sorry, hold on. I, that, that just offended me. Uh, no, she was not a hipster JD. I mean, yeah, she was not a hipster JD. She was a beatnik. Big difference. Oh, okay. Yes. My apologies. Oh, you slayed me. <laughs> oh, you slayed me. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, so Lola Bunny. So, you know, now you got this sultry female. Yeah, and, and the thing is, she comes out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> she oh. literally shows up. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta draw in girls, I guess. I don't know. You gotta draw in the furries. You gotta, like, you know, you, like, needed, you needed some girl in that I No, it's not that I have any problem with her being in it. It's how she's introduced. She literally just shows up. Just like, hey, I want to play basketball. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> never, this has never been a character established. We have not seen her any part of the movie so far. Michael Jordan gave her the seal of approval. Yeah, she, she's like, yeah, she she knows how to play basketball. She's that girl's good. got some skill. Girl's got some skill. What's <laughs> that? A girl wants to play football? <laughs> well, that's Rugs. just super. You're <laughs> talking about sports ball, Kyle. Sports ball. Oh, I'm sorry. God. This co- this entire conversation is you know kind of useless because I'm I assume we're all bad at sports. Yeah, no, I'm pretty yeah, good. Actually, I can yeah, pass I, soccer. I'm, okay. I'm actually pretty well coordinated, and I can hit a baseball pretty far. All right, that's just me then. I'm I can also ice sport. skate. Well, whoop de fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so. <laughs> so anyway, it's they, rabbit tits. Uh, yeah, rabbit tits. That's a Lola. No. So, uh. They train. They. they there's there's a whole montage where they gotta clean up their their gym and trade Michael Jordan to play basketball again after there's a whole hilarious adventure to the real world that involves Michael Jordan's kids. <laughs> and his bulldog. If and his, his, bu- his Charles the bulldog. It was his name Charles Is the- Barkley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think his name was just Charles, but that might have been the joke. <laughs> oh. Does everyone make fun of Charles Barkley? Because <laughs> he makes it so easy. He just looks like such a normal guy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I still maintain that the best Charles Barkley is Clerks animated Charles Barkley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all he ever comes on is just, hi, I'm Charles Barkley, and then just beat gets the shit beat. <laughs> no, my favorite is when they were doing the Temple of Doom thing at the end, and then they were referencing Return of the Jedi. High five! Pull <laughs> yeah. oh, Obi-Wan. I can stand there with Yoda and Obi-Wan, and then we'll give him a high five. I was offended. <laughs> uh, Actually, wait, since we're talking about Michael Jordan's family, can we just point out how hilarious it is that and Michael Jag- I mean Michael Jordan's whole family was in the movie, but they weren't. They were all replaced by professional actors. Right. <laughs> it wasn't really them. No, like his 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 he, wife and children were extras. <laughs> yeah. That's uh. Well, you know, you can, you got Michael Jordan who doesn't know how to act. We don't need to make it worse by putting his family in it. <laughs> I suppose you're right. <laughs> uh, but so you know, once Michael Jordan's caught back up to speed, you know, the the day of the. Showdown. You're missing the point. What he point? Been playing basketball never anymore. He's That's been playing sentence. baseball and yeah. he has been playing golf, so he doesn't remember how to play basketball. He forgot. He plum forgot. Clearly. He has to relearn it. <laughs> it was because of the retirement, okay? I I get it. Hey, That's why. That, hey, wait, wait, remember that scene in the movie where he tells Bill Murray that uh he wouldn't have a chance in the NBA? Yeah. And Murray's response is because am I? Is it because I'm white? It's because I'm white, right? And yeah. Larry, and he had to tell him that Larry Bird is white, and that <laughs> Bill Murray's Larry retort is Larry isn't white, he's clear. <laughs> Larry's white, he's clear. Can we just can we just think about it? Like if that was in a movie nowadays, <laughs> the internet would explode. So much shit, but Bill, the internet would explode with vitriol I, and hatred. <laughs> I, I still maintain that Bill Murray is the best part of this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, well we spoil. Sorry, we spoiled that part, but Bill Murray appears for no reason later. Well, we'll get to Bill Murray's introduction. Yeah, but they, they were playing golf together. That's I know. But it's just, it's well, just... yeah. Like I understand why he's there. I love. We'll, we'll get to it. But uh... <laughs> jumping ahead here, right? It's so the, deals so the the fucking basketball game starts, and like the Lucians just getting their ass pounded almost literally at some yeah. points. Um, and you know, fuck. 
fuck, sorry. So, you know, they get their ass beat. Forgot the rest of the movie? Yep, I just plum forgot. It's midnight, I'm tired. (laughs) Excuses. Um, So, the first half of the game's over, and everyone's just sitting around, defeated, everyone's like in bandages, and motherfucker. Michael Jordan, or no. Bucks just put some fucking water in a water bottle. I was like, here, here's steroids. It'll make you better. <laughs> yeah, it was called Michael It was called Michael Jordan's secret. It was the secret stuff. Uh, yeah, but secret. you know it was steroids. <laughs> but it yeah, show it, it just goes to show you the pow- what the power of persuasion can do. Because you tell someone it's like the big placebo effect. You tell them it's gonna help them, they'll have the confidence to do wow. it. I would have never known that. <laughs> I'm, so yeah, I told I'm you talking to the audience, not so much you, Kyle. Oh. I don't need your sass. We all uh, learned something right now. I'm a sass master. Sass man. A sassafras, as it were. Yeah. So, so anyways. After they drink they all the steroids. They their asses. Yeah. <laughs> There's the big old ass whooping. <laughs> yeah, she whoops that nice butt so hard. So uh, and then they I'm, I'm sure that they even paint his butt red and then like the bull goes crazy and then and then tackles his butt basically all sorts of hilarious hijinks yeah like so just, they can win just just no just throwing the, the the rules of basketball out the window Bugs is running around on a moped Sam and Elmer plot fucking guns at some point and shoot a guy. I'm not sure Wiley Coyote rigs explosives to the hoop. Yeah. It just, because, you know, that's that's legal. You but. know, what I really liked about it was in the stands, they had a bunch of, like, just one-shot Looney Tune characters. Mm-hmm. And they were just in the stand, like, like, like the gangsters. The and gangster shit. and the Dover brothers are in there, and and Hagatha the Witch or Witch Hazel, whatever just the fuck any you call any her. character that has been in a WB short, what, you you could probably pick them out of the crowd somewhere. Yes, I, I still don't that. think they could have filled that stadium, but well, well you, yeah, you know, still, <laughs> but it's, I, I thought it was cool though. It's it's much of stupid throwbacks, uh, but I if I'm remembering it right, like they eventually like. The, the monsters finally get a, an upper hand on them again and like knock out their their players. So they got to bring Wayne Knight's character. I don't think we've talked like anything about Wayne Knight. Other than no, he, he was <laughs> he was the, his publicist. If yeah, you want to like, talk about at him. the beginning of the movie, Wayne Knight just kind of drops in, like literally drops on him. Like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna be your publicist now. Michael Everybody... Jordan just accepts that. <laughs> Everybody is playing themselves, basically, and then Wayne Knight's like, hey, I'm the only character in this movie, other than a Looney Tune. Because Wayne Knight wasn't, you know, he was in Jurassic He was Park. in Seinfeld as Newman, okay? Was... <laughs> okay. Okay? Fair enough. So Newman comes in, uh, you know, and he gets and his... And he steals, he steals some dinosaur DNA, and they're like, <laughs> no, nah, fuck this noise, I'm gonna flatten his ass. <laughs> Yeah, so Wayne Knight's taken out after his very brief uh, appearance of the game. But wait a minute, wait a minute, guys, you're missing something. It's due to Wayne Knight's unfortunate removal from the game that Michael Jordan learns a secret that will play as the Deus Ex Machina. Oh, right. So, like, fucking Wayne Knight gets flattened, like, legit flat like a pancake, and they have to use air, you know, like, to... (laughs) <laughs> to pump it back up, to you know, like you do, and Michael Jordan's like, "Wait, how could he do that? He's a person." It's like, "You're in Looney Tune Lane. We have cartoon physics. <laughs> How'd you not know this by this now, by now?" You know, you think that would come up at some point. Yeah, right. Prior, but... You think that would have oh, yeah, come yeah. up by now, but there's a reason I said Deus Ex Machina. Right. So then they're like, "Oh shit, we need a we need a fifth player because everyone else is knocked out." Fucking Bill Murray just shows up. <laughs> Michael Jordan, they call... No, they, doesn't Michael Jordan call him in? No, Bill Murray just shows up, and they're like, how the fuck did you get down here? It's like, oh no, this one guy just gave me a ride. You know, I I, I knew this guy at Warner Brothers, he gave me a ride down here, it's it's a bit, no big deal. He's like, okay. <laughs> it was such a big fucking deal for anyone else to get down here. 
Like well, fucking he, he, Wayne Knight has to go down a golf hole. He, yeah. he is. He is Bill Murray. He's Bill Murray. The power of comedy got him and down. He gets, there. He, he gets mistaken for Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> yeah, the, like that's the, the the kind of references they make in this this movie for no real reason. Like when Bill Murray shows up, the the big head alien guy is like, like why is Dan Aykroyd in this this movie? And I'm like, first of all, way to go self referencing that you're in a movie. And second is like that's funny because you know they're both in Ghostbusters, so. It's called Breaking the Fourth Wall. I get what that is, Kyle. I'm not a child. I was a child when I watched this movie, but not now. Oh. Ooh. But. Could so, have fooled me. Right. Am I right? Yeah. Guys, guys, we are not, we are not. And, you know, I think we can all take a lesson from the one thing from Say Stream we haven't mentioned so far. What? The amazing R. Kelly track, I Believe I Can Fly. Oh, God. No, yeah. The song that would play at every high school and grade school graduation throughout the 90s man, and into the 2000s. I, 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 I gotta say, the Space Jam soundtrack is, like, the, like, the pinnacle... Not pinnacle's not the word I'm looking for. It just so much encapsulates the, the R&B uh, stylings of the mid-90s. The movie is the 90s. It is the 90s. Like, it is such, it, it it is is such a 90s, 90s movie. Yeah, like, it is the 90s, I think, in, like, a time capsule. Yeah. And, like, there's a scene where Daffy Duck is... Jesus Christ, I almost thought I just said Donald Duck, and I got really confused. Yeah. <laughs> Gave myself a fucking brain aneurysm right now. There's a scene where, you know, Daffy Duck dresses up essentially like Dennis Rodman... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just to remind everybody... That Dennis Rodman is a person. <laughs> yeah, Dennis Rodman from Basketball and uh, as Ryan Posehn would say. But just to remind you, like, this is what style was at the time in the 90s. Yeah. Like, there's so many... Uh, it's a time capsule. You can watch this movie and you can just put yourself in place. Like, yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm looking at the, the people on this soundtrack. You have people like fucking R. Kelly and Busta Rhymes and Coolio and LL Cool J... Just, it's, like the tri- it's like the try, like almost like a trifecta, if not more. <laughs> right, like you just like the who's who of R and B in the '90s is on this soundtrack, and it is a damn fine soundtrack, if I do say so. I said, I mean, I believe I can fly. I'm pretty sure it was on repeat at every grade school. <laughs> that was just on the radio. That was played at like every school dance. Yeah, yeah everywhere. It was the slow song. It was the slow song. It was the slow jam. It you know? got everybody like, some side boob. And, like, for once, like, one brief moment, I actually believed I could fly. <laughs> That's when Kyle broke his leg. Oh, yeah. It, it sucked. You tried to sue R. Kelly, but he just pissed on you. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be till years later. Um, But, yeah, so you got Bill Murray in there, and, you know... They're getting to the last couple seconds of the the game, and but the funny thing is, Bill Murray is actually pretty good. Like he, he uses his smart mouth to like outsmart the yeah the monsters, right? <laughs> but uh, so they they so they're like it's the last couple seconds, and they need like one basket, but they're like all the way at the fucking end of, the end of the court. So Michael Jordan's like, I'm gonna try to put that cartoon physics shit in the practice now, and does one point. Does the plot point? It is a plot point now, and motherfucker with like seven people hanging on to him does a half court dunk. <laughs> but he stretches his arm out. Yeah, the, despite the fact he has every monster on the team basically trying to drag him down, he pulls off this epic, like beyond NBA Jam level <laughs> of insanity. Like if the yeah. announcer from NBA Jam was present, this guy. <laughs> Would have been shitting himself, <laughs> and like his eye, like his face would have melted. Like at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, like this guy wouldn't be able to handle, like just how intense and insane this dunk was. It yeah. was the dunk heard around the world. Right. It was. <laughs> it, it it blew all of our collective tiny child minds. But, I mean, uh, it, it was it was the epic conclusion. It was akin to Darth Vader deciding he is not going to let his son die at the hands of the Emperor. <laughs> that that is the cinematic equivalent. Yeah, all right. Or cinematic uh, equivalent I... of Brody in Jaws saying "Smile, you son of a bitch" and shooting the air tank. 
but I, I don't think that. anything has topped <laughs> that piece of cinematic history so far. <laughs> no, it's been I, like a good I, twenty years, I think. Like I think years from now, like if we ever have to send like a time capsule into space, we'll just send a picture of Michael Jordan do the half co- court dunk. <laughs> Just send yeah. that in gift form so everyone and future civilizations and other cultures will see it and go like, wow, they were truly <laughs> God's gift. Oh, God. So, so, I, I, so, yeah, after Michael Jordan scores the like, the last point where they win by one because, you know, uh, you know, plot. but pl- <laughs> because plot, uh, everything's good. The, the Looney Tunes win. Bill Murray's like, you know what? I I don't want to play basketball, and then just leaves. Yeah, he, he, leaves <laughs> he, as, he comes he in, safe the day, leaves as he comes, like, as Bill Murray tends to do. Yeah, he's he, like, he had to work on Garfield, so he just <laughs> I think he I was had a little, to bounce. It was a little yeah. early for Garfield. But... At least he admits that that was something. But yeah, true. it's so fucking stupid because he's like, all right, we won. It's like, hey man, we're gonna go celebrate and stuff. And it's like, nah, I'm just I'm just gonna head out. I'm like, oh, okay, Bill Murray. I guess uh, gonna I'm go Bill do... Murray. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> okay. Bill Murray. I have to go. I have like, to go find. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go find college parties in New York and give everyone fatherly advice. Like he probably yeah. like hung out in Toon World or whatever that is for like a while and like went on this spiritual journey and taught. Got high as fuck. Well, yeah. Got, I mean, got some <laughs> Toon pussy and like he's just uh, good. Yeah. He was probably just like, yeah, I was a Ghostbuster, you know. <laughs> Bill Murray probably hit Granny. He'd probably get on that. I don't know. He seems nah. he seems like he would have a little too much respect. No. Yeah. But so Are you are you besmirching the name of our Lord and Savior, Bill Murray? No, yeah. I I'd worship Bill Murray. He's the mascot of the chive. <laughs> okay. Uh so just to, to wrap up this this movie summary, uh, you know, the the little aliens have to give their their powers back. They send their boss off into oh, space. Oh wait, 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 wait! Hold on, hold on. We completely forgot. Oh, like, yeah. So you know they're playing this game. The way doesn't Michael Jordan make like some sort of like offer that if he oh can't yeah final like dunk, he will sacrifice himself akin to Jesus. Yeah, Christ. yeah. He's because like he, somewhere he, like it, so like I think the last quarter or whatever in the game he like makes a deal with the. The boss guy is like, look, if if we lose, you can have me, and I'll do whatever the fuck you want. I think he did that so the, the Looney Tunes would not have He's to go fair. if they lost, yes. Uh, he was a Jesus figure. Right. <laughs> He's black Jesus. <laughs> uh, I mean, how you know, this movie taught you so much. Taught you to be selfless. Taught I you laughed. to work. It taught well, me I that I... laughed and I cried. Yeah, I mean... It, it taught was... me that I could abandon my friends or abandon my sport completely and then be welcome with open arms whenever I want. Well, when you're worth more than <laughs> any. When you got as many it. endorsements as he does. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure Nike was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, wasn't the movie basically just a lead up to him announcing his return to basketball? Basically. Yeah. I mean. I, mean, I almost feel like this. they, they made the movie in secret with that ending and it's like the next day he's like well coming back to basketball y'all he's like hey guys can I come back yes 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 god yes we need you <laughs> please Michael please come back uh, uh like, you know Michael Jordan does consider it a high like the most important thing he ever did coming back to baseball or space or no best- space jam oh yeah despite, there is actually a quote despite all my NBA accomplishments my biggest one will always be space jam <laughs> That is beautiful. And he, like, looks so, like, awkward. He's, like, scratching the back of his head. He's like, yeah, you know, I might be, like, you know, one of the most iconic players in NBA history, but, uh... Hey, man, <laughs> if I got to be... My biggest accomplishment was being in a cartoon where I shared a building with Bugs Bunny. I think, like, even Bugs... Bugs Bunny is actually top billing on the movie. Michael Jordan is... <laughs> second name on no, the no, they pulled like a, No, no, they pulled, like, a Demolition Man where they're both side by side. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just looking at the, the poster. Bugs' is per- name is first on it. <laughs> no, if you read it that way. I don't know. If I read it back, I don't know. Whatever. Oh. Uh, Jeez, learn how to read movie posters, man. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, we, <laughs> there's, 
This is going to be one of those episodes we're going to look back on. God, everyone was really on edge. There's just a lot of pa- <laughs> just a lot of passion running out with Space Jam. Right. The, culture, the cultural event of the century. Right. It was. Once again, I'm speaking all this shit, but I really, I, I'm just amazed. Well, since we're finished summarizing the plot of the movie, can I just bring up how insane it is to me that Space Jam is still, like, a it's still a popular subject. It's. I, if you go on Tumblr, you will find so much. And, like, this is before there was the rumors about it's LeBron. LeBron they want to get LeBron James I, to Space Jam 2. I don't want them to make a Space Jam 2. I don't, I don't know if they're going to, but I just find it crazy that p- before this was even brought up, Space Jam has been, like, a phenomenon even now. The movie came out in 96. It's almost it, 20 years old. <laughs> but it is, if you... The Space Jam website, the official Space Jam website from the fucking days of dial-up is still active and running, and it probably gets more hits than this podcast will ever see, ever. It's a really sad sentiment. But Sorry, just make, I didn't mean to... That just makes me not want to do this anymore. Like well, We well, will someday you. achieve Space Jam 96 website numbers. Get Patrick Ewing on the line. Get those idiots from the guy with the glasses. We're going to do this basketball game. All right, we'll get on. I'll, I'll send him a tweet or something. I will dislocate my arm so I can pull off that epic dunk. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, like it's just, hey, there's so many remixes of the Space Jam theme. Oh, God. Like with... every, every couple of days, someone's remixed the, the Space Jam theme with, with something. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, but I love them because. Uh, oh no, it's 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 beautiful to listen I'm, to. I'm sure I I'm positive I saw it, but if anyone didn't know, like, I'm a huge fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> I think it's one. No, of the Andy, you've never better. mentioned that once. I, I didn't know if I had on the podcast. I just wanted <laughs> to be sure. But if you get a chance to check out the um, <laughs> check out the JoJo's theme remixes with Space Jam because the titles not only are they really good. Like, they have no business being as catchy and as amazing to listen to, but the names of them are all amazing. Like, it's Barkley's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> My God. And uh, Slam Proud, because the, na- the name of the first theme from uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3, Stardust Crusaders, is called Stand Proud. Oh, God. <laughs> It's also called Stardust Crusaders, but in their version, it's called Slam Dunk Crusaders. I'm look these up. I'm intrigued and appalled at the same time. <laughs> oh no, no, you gotta look it up because it's amazing. Because they replace everyone's faces with, like, you know, basketball players. So you got it seems to be Charles Barkley, but like uh, Dio Dio Slamdo instead of Dio Brando. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just just look it up. Look it up. You will uh, not. Be so. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, like, the only one who actually enjoys this aspect of the movie, but the, occasionally during the movie, they would cut to uh, the the five players that the aliens stole the powers from. They would, like, showing them, like, adjusting to having no skill anymore. Oh, well, yeah. The, the Patrick Ewing psychiatrist asked him if he's having trouble performing in film. <laughs> I just love this, like, these, just these montages of them going to, like, psychiatric tests, like, they think there's something mentally wrong with them, or I think they go, they almost go to an exorcist at one point. Uh, Charles Barkley prays to God in a, in a, you know, a church and says he'll never go out with Madonna ever again. I'll never do Madonna again. <laughs> I feel so bad for Charles Barkley, but he takes it like a champ. Uh, see, that's, that is the... 15-year-old girl tells... Calls Charles Barkley a wannabe. <laughs> that is the best know. part of this movie, where Charles Barkley's like, "Holy shit, it's Charles Barkley!" He tried to ba- play basketball, and then he he fucks it up so bad, and all these kids just start shitting on Charles Barkley. And I honestly think that's where it all started from. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like some girl goes, "Be gone!" And it's just like, "Holy shit!" Wanna be? Be gone! <laughs> it's just like, man, Charles Barkley, I love you. <laughs> you seem like an no, alright guy. No, but like, see <laughs> that. I, I appreciate Charles Barkley because he can make fun of himself. And oh, Michael Jordan, this whole movie, I think, is kind of making fun of himself. I No, Char, like, Michael Jordan plays it a straight face the entire movie. No, I think that's just the way his face is. <laughs> okay, fair I enough. Think he, I think he thinks that's all... I think he thinks that really happened. 
<laughs> he's like, yeah, I, I was totally in a movie with Bugs Bunny. It wasn't green screened at all. <laughs> oh, like if you ask him, like what just ha- like what happened, he'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, Bugs Bunny, nice guy. And I hung out with him. You know, he was. Uh... <laughs> I think like even like last year, or maybe it was even this year, they actually did, uh, like these commercials where like I think it was Bugs that, that was like, oh yeah, Michael Jordan's such a such a good guy because I think they like were reissuing the. Jordan Airs or whatever. I don't know, I have to go rewatch them again. It's kind They're of not stupid. airs, there are hairs. <laughs> I will come over there and I will slap you. Oh, are we no, finally going to have the meet up? Are we going to do the live show? No. If, oh. I honestly believe if the three of us were in the same location at any even time, the universe would collapse in on itself. Jesus. Where's the company vacation? <laughs> um, I don't know. Where's we a real? Going, we need we a really shitty theme park. <laughs> sure, I was gonna oh, say yeah. I was gonna say a really shitty theme park, but uh, Santa's Village. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to Santa's Village <laughs> for the company retreat. I'm down. I didn't know we had any other like people in this company, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I we've got. I Deb- didn't know they were a company. I've what got. I've happen? got. A, I've got a secretary and everything. Her name's Deborah. She's kind of homely, but you know, she does good work. Yeah. <laughs> oh. She's she's in tr- she's transitioning though. Um, Whoa. So. <laughs> Whoa. So anyway, now that, we're, uh, now that we sound like a bunch of topical douche nozzles. <laughs> right. Thanks, um, I I will say to this film's credit, I do like um the the voice actors they got to replace, you know, no blank. God rest his soul. Uh, uh, you do know that um. One of, uh, who was it? I know some people were very harsh on this movie, and I believe one of them was, was it a Chuck, was it Chuck Jones? Maybe. Yeah, Chuck Jones. He, uh, he was very critical on this movie because he felt that in his world that he, he thought really highly of Bugs Bunny, apparently. Oh, yeah. He loves Bugs Bunny. I know, because he said, like, he is actually quoted as saying that, you know, it wouldn't have took him an hour and a half to beat the monsters, he would have done it on his own without having to get Michael Jordan in seven minutes. And I was right. like, damn. I, I think you kind of missed the point, Chuck Jones, but... I was like, god damn, Chuck Jones. Uh, I don't know, like, look, I will still maintain that Mel Blanc is the voice of the Looney Tunes. No one can replace him completely, but I, Billy West it, and and D did, you know, and all those guys, I think they did you know, I, I, a well enough job that my little child mind didn't know the difference. I didn't know. I still didn't know. I never bothered researching. Like, I don't know. The, 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 I the, knew the, in the, my I, child heart. I don't know. If the boy, like, you know, when you're at that age when Space Jam came out, you're convinced these people are almost real. <laughs> Bugs Bunny's a real person. I've seen him at the mall. <laughs> swear to I, God. I always like the Ren and Stimpy, like, explanation of cartoons. They're like, they're not real. They're puppets on TV. <laughs> makes it sound like they're just puppets. It all makes so much more sense now. Oh, no. Yeah. No, that, that was a sad realization as a child when you were, learned that cartoon characters aren't real. They're just figments of our imagination, essentially. I think I was more devastated when I found out Santa wasn't real. Childhood ruined right there. I wasn't really that affected by not learning Santa. In fact, what I learned was like, you know what? That makes sense. Like, I get it now. My heart is still broken. I'm sorry, Kyle. I'll just admit Santa and come drop your presents off to um, renew your faith. Okay, who the fuck was eating my cookies when I was a kid? Me. Probably your parents. Or JD. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. But, um... You know, I, I will say another thing good that I, I like about this, I think the integration of the animation and the 2D was very well done. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, honestly, it was the next logical evolution of, like, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit style mm-hmm. sort of movie. I mean, you can talk shit about it being a 90s film. Like, no, I, I do not have 90s nostalgia at all. Like, I'm, as I said... I on the, do. Like, as I said on the news show earlier this week, I still am, like, wondering, like, man, is... 
is Nickelodeon's The Splat going to really last? And I thought, oh, well, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. But, um, like, Space Jam, like, well, like you brought up, you know, there's that transformation scene that's really well animated. Like, a lot of the stuff is, like, it's actually a pretty well technically made movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, and it okay. made a hell of a lot more than what the budget was. Oh, yeah. It's a critical it's, success. It's yeah. the highest grossing basketball movie of all time. Which I think, that in fact, is hilarious. <laughs> well, think about it. Look at the look at the groups of people you're getting to watch. One, it's a family movie. Two, it's a basketball-centric movie. So anyone who's even slightly interested in Michael Jordan is probably going to go see it. And then Three, you got... kids, I mean... <laughs> no, it's a loses. comedy. It's a comedy. It's, it's got that R. Kelly song in it. I mean... It's a Bill Murray movie? Yeah, you, 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 like, I'm sure people would go see it. Hey, Bill Murray shows up. Oh, I gotta see this. Newman's in it? <laughs> <laughs> this movie's just got it all. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a very slash-and-burn style mentality. It, it gets everybody. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, it, if I could only say one negative thing about this movie is that, you know, it did so well that they technically made a sequel years later and it was not nearly as good. They did? They made Back in Action. <laughs> oh, that's tech- is that tech- I never saw that. I is just that- say it's Space Jam 2 because it's Looney Tunes yeah. in the real world. And- Doesn't Brendan Fraser like beat himself up in the movie? Or yeah, like- because yeah, like yeah. Brendan Fraser is a stuntman and himself. Oh. And he beats he beats up Brendan Fr- Brendan Fraser, the stuntman beats up Brendan Fraser, the actor. <laughs> Poor Brendan Fraser. He just can't catch a break. No. Just, just fuck my shit up. What did I do? I don't uh, know. That's just a meme going around where his hair is all fucked up. Oh, I thought we were. I thought we fucked up something of yours. I'm like, what? Uh, what do do? No, no. But then they had Steve Martin as the bad guy, and he was like the head of Acne, and and it was just, it was bad. It was just awful. I wanted to vomit when I watched that movie. I was so, like, gung-ho to see it. Like, yeah, this is going to be great. And then, no, it was fucking terrible. And then something about Scooby-Doo. <laughs> God, you just really tossed that together. Yeah, I, I don't know. There is some stupid Scooby-Doo reference in Back in Action. Yeah, because Matthew Lewis talking to Shaggy. <laughs> And wasn't there also, kind of like how in Space Jam there was a reference to Disney? I Honestly, I think I've watched Back in Action once. <laughs> well, no, I was talking about in Space Jam. Oh, they, oh! They, they take pot shots at Disney. Yeah, they take a pot shot at... Okay, so it's actually... It's it's the dumbest fucking joke, but I love it. Uh, it's uh, Bugs and Daffy have to go to the real world to go get Michael Jordan's basketball gear from his house. And on their way back, they're walking, you know back to the hole they came out of, and Daffy is, like, trying to come up with names for the, for the team before they come up with the, the Toon Squad or whatever the fuck they called it. And he's just cycling through it, and he's like, I got it, we'll call it the Ducks. And Bugs is just like, the Ducks? What kind of Mickey Mouse organization would call himself the Ducks? <laughs> and it's like, wow, Warner, just just take the easy joke. <laughs> I don't know, I thought that was... Oh, no, I think I think it's a, I love that joke. It's so I think fucking it's kinda well. It's, well written. It's so fucking stupid, though. But I also love puns, and I know some people think those are the lowest form of comedy. <laughs> I love your puns, though. Your puns are well placed. I They're punny. <laughs> Kyle, go, go sit in the corner. You're done. Sorry. Actually, what what are, what are we at in terms of time? Oh, we're, we we still got a minute. <laughs> One well, minute. We got a minute. So I don't know. A couple minutes. Minute I don't have count. an I don't have an exact time on this stuff. Uh, but do do you guys have any other favorite parts of it or issues you had with the movie that you'd like to share with the, the class? I had a shitload of the McDonald toys. Oh, was, dude, yeah. when they when they had the plush toys. Oh yeah, after oh. Uh, after my brother took me, I went and actually he went with we it was KFC. I thought it was McDonald's. I'm pretty sure it was KFC, and they had I'm gonna look that shit up, but I KFC don't... was giving away the plush for um. I got well, I got the blue monster. Oh, I know. I, yeah, I know. Was... I have a Bugs plush somewhere in my parents' attic. I can almost swear it was McDonald's because they 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 have right. done cross promotions oh, before. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. My mistake. The, the only reason I say it is because there's that one scene where they basically throw out like 
five or six endorsements in one sentence where, like, fucking Wayne Knight comes in, he's like, uh, he throws out, like, Wheaties and a Big Mac, Nikes, uh, well, doesn't he, yeah, because doesn't someone say to Michael Jordan, put on your Hanes, lace yeah, up he's like, Nikes, yeah. eat your Wheaties, <laughs> and, we'll cra- and we'll grab a Big Mac on the way to the ballpark. <laughs> Like, they totally knew what they were doing. Like, ah, you know. No, it's like, if you're going to make a product endorsement so blatant, at least make a joke out of it. Exactly. And, and the fact that they just threw so many of them into one sentence is is the greatest joke. I mean, that's what the movie was really all about. Oh, no, it was one giant product placement, but... But they made fun of it so relentlessly. It, it was better than Mountain Dew Robot. <laughs> Fucking Mountain Dew Robot. <laughs> Oh, God. Michael Bay, why do we let you do things still? I'm not allowed to talk about Michael Bay. <laughs> no, we'll be here all night. <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> I'm down for it. I ain't got other shit to do. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. In, we'll make a future episode where is Andy's issue with Michael Bay. No, I already explained it. It's in the Transformers episode. We don't need to go back to it. Oh, yeah. I think we need to revisit it. <laughs> well, we'll do that for another <laughs> We'll do that for oh god. Uh so do you two have anything else? I'm still just utterly fascinated by the fact that Space Jam like, I remember being at a, a friend from high school, I ended up working with him again later years later at our um, Best Buy and we I ended up going to hang out at his place, he's having a get together and his choice of music for the night while we were playing beer pong was the Space Jam theme. This this man is my hero, <laughs> and it was just so weird to me. I'm like, God, like I I remember. I, it's just weird for me because I watched the movie. Yes, I saw it in theaters. I'm pretty sure I watched it, but I just didn't think like years from now we would still be hearing about Space Jam. So nah, much. man, it, Space Jam hasn't gone away. It's, it's timeless. It is a timeless classic, I and these fucking '90s kids, man. Fucking, and that is why it's timeless because our generation specifically like people our age have such it's we have such a nostalgia for that time period and i think it was just like because that part of the 90s there was just so much development socially and in technology and all that shit that we just kind of look back on that time with fondness and space jam just kind of happened to be smack in the middle of that so it was the cultural phenomenon cultural event of the season well, it was a big deal when you consider the fact that it literally was, like, every possible 90s thing thrown into a movie. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> it's fucking... It, it made McDonald's, pain. Wheaties, Nikes... Uh, All that. Wayne Knight, uh... I mean, even that, I mean, it it was an $80 million budget and made $250 million, so I, I would call that a, a rousing success. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah. Should we, should we wrap it up here? I guess so. Well, do you guys remember the 90s all that well? Kind of. Bits I mean, and pieces. I mean, we had pizza parties and bowling alleys and we, Nintendo games. And Lisa McDonald's. Frank. Roller have... rinks. Ice cream. No, you know what? I went to a roller rink last, or, I don't know, it was a couple months ago, and that was actually kind of disappointing. Mostly because it was full of middle schoolers. Well, right now, it's... If you guys haven't noticed, unless it's not, if unless it's just a California thing, we got fucking trampoline parks, and that's all the rage. I wish everybody, we had those. Everybody goes to trampoline parks instead of roller rinks now. That's where kids' Shit. birthday parties are. Shit, I want those. They're pretty fucking cool, but hmm. I I don't know. I don't know if they let grown ass adults trample around. We'll rent it out for a day. Is that the verb trample for trampoline? I don't think so. Um, it is, we'll it, let it, we'll I'll let it. it slide. If not, we'll make it a thing because, you know, that's just how language evolves. In Tra- the words of... Trampopoly. <laughs> Trampopoly. <laughs> well, in the words of Judge Mills Lane, I'll allow it. Oh. <laughs> All right, you knuckleheads. do oh. <laughs> Well, un- unless you have... So, an- I think we should give it a rating. I give Space Jam 11 thumbs up. Right who's, off the bat. Whose right other there. thumbs, besides your two, whose other nine thumbs are you using? A bunch I'd, of 90s I'd, I'd, kids. I'd donate. Sure. I'd, do, I'd donate my thumbs to that. I, all right, I'll, I'll pitch in, too. 
Space Jam is a quality film, but if you have not, by some chance, seen Space Jam, you're robbing yourself of a truly wonderful time. I mean, you have to... I mean, I'm sure if you look at it as a, as a, in a jaded way, where it's like, ah, it's just one giant cash-in of the 90s. No, you need to go into Space Jam, just Ex- fully... Ex- yeah. Just just fully accept the madness you're about to watch, and just, just run in head it. first. You have to kind of understand what it is. <laughs> It is you what it is, and it's you, glorious. Yeah, you can't, you can't really think too hard about it. <laughs> uh, well, I think that just about does it for the Naked Paint Club podcast for this week. Uh, thank you, everybody, once again for listening to it, if you made it this far. Um, if you could, please share this with whoever... Uh, you can. That would be amazing. Uh, Everybody, we've got Twitter, we've got Tumblr, we've got Facebook, we've got Instagram. We are literally everywhere that isn't iTunes because I'm still but, working on that. But if you guys got a Google Plus, I'm sorry, we don't have a Google Plus. <laughs> Fuck Google Plus. I'm what sorry, a, Google. What the hell is a Google Plus? Right? Google's answer to Facebook? No. no. Ka- oh. Never mind, Kyle missed the joke. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'll put the links to, in the description to all our social media pages as well as all of our personal pages if you'd like to follow us on there. Um, so thanks again for listening, and uh, we will see you on Monday for the new show. That's my thing. Oh, that's his line, man. All right, can't step on his toes. Oh, can't even do it right. Yeah, it's, I I just stopped doing things. You Did... ruined it. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna a loving podcast where we all love each other. I'm gonna stop this before people know about the abuse. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Everybody. Good night.